So we've done one chlorine, we've done two chlorines. Let's finish our discussion of aromatic proton NMR by thinking about the trichlorobenzenes. Three isomers thereof. I've tried to draw these so they're as symmetric as possible. So you have the one, two, three, we have the one, three, five, and then we have the one, two, four, which there's no good way to draw it. So it's nice and pretty in terms of symmetry. Now let's look at the spectra. There are the three spectra associated with this. So let's see without planning a forethought whether we can figure out which is which. Well, I would always go for the most symmetrical first and the most symmetrical is this beautiful one here, the 135. OK, so when we look at the 135, I hope you'd agree that each hydrogen is equivalent. Each hydrogen is on a carbon in between two carbon chlorines. So therefore, just one type of hydrogen there, we would expect one signal um, that's a singlet. And fortunately, right down there in the bottom left hand corner is such a spectrum. Three hydrogens worth associated with that one signal. OK, now the next one is I'd work up in symmetry and I'd go for, let's say this one, the one, two, three. So when you look at the one, two, three, there's three hydrogens. Um, how many are equivalent? And I hope you would agree that this one in the middle is unique. But this one here and this one here should be equivalent to each other. So two different protons, HA, HA and HB. Now let's think about what we're doing in terms of splitting. HA has got one adjacent proton. So we'd expect a two hydrogen doublet for HA. And then HB has got two adjacent hydrogens. So we'd expect a one hydrogen triplet for HB. So we want a doublet and a triplet. Well, we don't have to move this structure very far to get to its associated spectrum. There's the doublet, there's the triplet. Again, HA, the one leading, giving rise to the doublet, is the one that's close to the chlorines so therefore it's shifted further down field it's more deshielded and although the integration fails to differentiate between them it's fairly obvious that the HA peak is quite a bit higher than the HB peak as you would expect two to one so this means that this last spectrum must be this one the one two four trichloro Let's see what we've got in terms of hydrogens there. Well, obviously this one here is a hydrogen all to itself. It's a one hydrogen that's split by or between two chlorine atoms. So it's going to be quite nicely downfield. So I'd expect it to be that one. But now these two here, and this is an interesting, fun little one, because you would look at first sight, you say, oh, look, they're adjacent to, they're, they're equivalent because they're both adjacent to a chlorine. Except this one here goes to a chlorine and a chlorine. This one here just goes to a chlorine. So these are actually different protons, just slightly different protons, but they are different. So what we got here is three types of proton, three signals, HA, we would expect to be a singlet and we'd expect that to be the most down field. Let's actually move the molecule over, shall we? We'd expect HA to be the furthest down field because it's stuck between two chlorines. And indeed that one hydrogen singlet there is going to be HA. Then we would expect HB and HC um, to be a couple of doublets. Well, we've got two hydrogen here, can't resolve them, but there's a couple of doublets. There's one doublet. There's another doublet. I would anticipate that the one that has two chlorines compared to one chlorine, if you get my drift there, so HB would be a little bit further downfield than HC, but I, I wouldn't go to war over it. So there we are. We've done the monochloro, the dichloro, and the trichlorobenzenes, each of which offers its own fun little analysis in terms of the splitting patterns.